If you've been following my Design to Dollars newsletter, I put out an issue recently talking about drop shadows. How you utilize drop shadows can really be the difference between enhancing your design and taking a step back and distracting from your overall design. So today I'm going to talk to you about the two different ways that I personally use drop shadows to help elevate my designs. All right, so one of the first things we're going to look at when incorporating a drop shadow into your design is utilizing a tech shadow. And when I utilize a text shadow, um, it's often when text is overlaid on top of an image to really help add to the depth and additionally, most importantly, the readability of that text on top. So as you can see on this page, we've got a headline and it's difficult to read, right? With that image in the background being so visible, um, the text is just not popping out as well as it could. And so we're going to do uh, two things here. One of those being a text shadow and the other lightening up that image in the background. So let's go ahead and jump in the editor. So we're going to select this uh, headline here. And currently at the time of recording this video, the new generate blocks update does not have text shadow as part of the new global classes. So we're going to use the legacy style of effects um, where we're going to have the local styles here. So select your headline, come on down to text shadow and hit the toolbar here. As you can see right away, it adds a default drop shadow to you for you uh, based on some of these default setting colors, uh, offsets and blur. So one of the best things I think when it comes to drop shadows on text, is making it dark enough to be effective, but not too dark that it makes it feel too 3D or like really distract from the design. So we needed to push off of that image and be more visible, but we don't want it to distract. Hey, let me stop you real quick to tell you about a free video I just put together on teaching you five ways you can improve your web design consistency. These are things I've learned over my 10 plus year career as a designer. So just check out the link in the description. It'll take you to this page where you enter your name and email and get instant access. Remember to do a zero zero offset so that it's centered on the text itself. I don't personally, uh, I don't know if that's more so just a design preference, but I don't like the angled drop shadows as much as I like just a zero zero offset. So I'm gonna do that and then let's go ahead and up the blur to about 20. And what that does is it softens the text shadow so that it doesn't make it so harsh and visible, but it, yet it still does add a little bit of uh, depth to it. So if we come back in here, I'm actually going to up my opacity probably to about 0.65. I think that looks pretty good. It's still visible, it's still helping, but it, again, it's very subtle. So we can go ahead and click out of that. And now in the background, I'm gonna choose my container and I'm going to lower the opacity in my background panel of my image to about uh, 0.75. So we can go ahead now and hit update, come to our page, refresh, and there you have it. So now you can easily tell, um, you know, the text that I untreated left as is versus the headline that now has that drop shadow um, it's much more visible than everything else in this hero section. Now, of course, we can go through and uh, tweak this text as well to kind of give it some of the same treatment, really soften that blur out using black and opacity. But for the most part, I really focus on utilizing text shadow only for headlines and large text. Now, as we travel on further down this page, um, you'll notice a few areas that have some card design. So, here is a three section layout um, and these cards have a very light gray background where they have a white background on them themselves. And it's very hard to see those edges. Um, of course, we can darken the background a bit to help with that contrast, but oftentimes I like a more subtle contrast and difference between the background and the foreground. So this is the second area that I utilize drop shadows is on card designs and what this really does for you is it adds an extra element of depth to be able to lift off certain content from your page 
and really differentiate the foreground from the background. Um, again, we could add a darker color in the background, but really I like the subtle difference in it and I would rather just push the card off without affecting the background of the container itself. Um, if we scroll on a little bit further, we can see again, here's another card section uh, with the two column layout and these utilize a border color. So certainly that helps be able to see those cards easily. Um, but again, I usually like a more softer edge without the harsh uh, border. So we can go ahead and also explore how a background shadow uh, can help enhance these cards and soften them, but still push them to the foreground more. So we'll scroll on down our page here and come to this first section where we have our card layout that we first spoke about. So we're going to select the outer container that's holding the content in this card. And unlike our text shadow, the new Generate Blocks global classes do allow us to create a class and utilize a box shadow effect. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add a style for, we'll call this um, box shadow. Go ahead and hit create. And we're gonna say blank style because we don't wanna carry over anything. And we'll come on down to effects and choose box shadow. So again, this has some defaults um, built into it, which out of the box does not look good. <laughs> and so what we're gonna do once again, I'm going to zero out the offsets and I'm going to add the blur, let's say about 20, maybe on this one about 12 pixels. Um, and then the, I'm gonna choose black once again and we'll bring down the opacity quite a bit here, maybe to about 0 0.08. And as you see on this one, it has spread options. So this one, I don't want the spread to be really a lot. So let's go even down to four pixels. All right, we'll hit the checkbox there and it'll enable it. So, um, I think that's looking pretty good. We could even probably um, lower that even a hair. So if we select our container here and go back into our global style, go to effects, click into our box shadow, and let's see if we lower the spread even down to two pixels. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. So we can go jump on back to our block here and now because of this global style, we can come to our other containers below this with the secondary cards and we can add a style, say box shadow and select this container, choose box shadow. Perfect, so we'll go ahead and say update, come to the front end. So now you can see right now before, um, you know, the contrast with the background is just way too close uh, hard to see, but as we refresh, now it really helps you to visualize those individual cards, see their edges, but it did not really create any harsh effects to the design. And so I really like the look and feel of this. All right, so we can jump back in and let's go ahead and do the same thing here uh, by adding the background shadow on these boxes and let's go ahead and just use the same global class style because I think it should work fine. So we'll add that and then in the border I'm going to zero this out because I don't want a border I just want the um, box shadow so we'll zero this out once again and go up at our class box shadow. Let's hit update, refresh, and there you have it. Again, um, this looks really awesome. I think the ability to push these cards off of that background into the foreground, um, along with the overlap here in the, in the background of the next section, um, this is a perfect example of a scenario that I would easily utilize a box shadow in my designs. So those are the two ways that I really recommend and personally utilize drop shadows in my designs. 
There's so many different ways you can actually tweak with those drop shadow settings to make it very harsh, really offset, uh, maybe really more dramatic. But I always feel like the smallest, most subtle drop shadow is always the most effective. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.